We're chatting with our guest host, John Hoffmeister, the head of uh, Shell's U.S. operations. John, you uh, recently finished a tour of uh, 50 cities, right, here in the U.S. You met with 15,000 Americans right. yes. uh, trying to dispel some of the myths that Americans harbor about big oil and the price of crude. One is just that, that oil prices are artificial. Right. Yeah, there's a, uh, these are myths that we heard in people's minds. They carry it around. Also, the public policymakers carry these myths around in their mind as well. They think price, the price of oil is somehow artificial in the sense that we as a company set that price. When in fact, you all know that the global trading market is what moves that price up and down. And, and yet, when people look at the price at the pump, they think that is correlated to me sitting in my office in Houston saying, I want to charge $3.59 in New York City. It doesn't work That's that not way. to say it's not artificial. It's just other people who are manipulating <laughs> right, right. the price. Other That's people right. are yeah. The second myth is that we're actually running out. And there is a, a yeah. larger school of economists who think that is a possibility. Well, the or the production will peak. The peak oil theory has really swamped the world. I mean, uh, God bless Matt Simmons. His assumptions are correct based on his hypotheses but his hypotheses are too narrow. In other words, he's looking at conventional oil only, and in the industry, we look at unconventional oil as well. He's also, uh, you know, I think, basing his conclusions on a particular study of one country, Saudi Arabia, where there's a whole lot of other reservoirs that around the world that we're still discovering. Right. Now, will we peak? Someday we will peak, but it won't be because we don't have enough oil. Finally, the, the thing I'm sure you heard a lot from people is that, well, <laughs> Wind, solar, and that's the answer, that there's somehow this magic bullet, that they can actually replace crude entirely. Well, I, I, you know, we can try, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, certainly not in my lifetime. But I think we should give, give a good go to the alternatives because, let's face it, I think there's too much CO2 in the atmosphere, uh, man-made CO2. Not everybody agrees with that, but I think Shell's of the view that, that we keep pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. We don't know for certain whether it makes a climate change. But let's use technology to not put so much CO2 into the atmosphere. Right. We're going to talk a little bit later about uh, Shell's attempt to try to build a bridge between consumers and the company. Sure. Uh, you're taking a lead on that to some degree. We'll take some viewer emails as well. Uh, so send them in. Uh, squawk at CNBC.com uh, for John Hoffmeister. You're, you're not in a position to be skeptical about whether it's CO2. No. Uh, an oil company, a, a, a skeptic who's not related to the oil company is not in a position to be skeptical <laughs> about whether CO2 causes global warming. You're speaking with, from with, experience. With the religion, the, and I, I, that's not a word I use lightly, with the religion of global warming, nobody is, but if you're an oil company, to even mention the possibility that CO2 might not be what's causing the warming, you can't possibly do that, John. So you were correct in, in saying it that way. <laughs>